the rope first. <laughs> If I don't have, and I'm around somebody that doesn't have, why am I going to compare myself with them? If another person is unholy, and I'm not, and I'm un unholy, and that person is, is unholy, how would I get better in Christ when I'm comparing myself and we got the same kind of goal? We ain't going nowhere. We just playing church together. Then what? Bible says it's, it's an unwise person. So we got to be trained to be. Uh, not to compete with each other, but support each other. You know, one of the things I was <laughs> looking at, when black people go into business, that's why we have been trained not to support each other. We have been trained through tradition that we don't support each other. Because I don't want that person to do better than I'm doing. And that spirit rises up. And that is a spirit. Amen. So erroneous benchmarks can stop you from reaching your potential. Yeah. Maybe God wants you to go higher. When one person wants to do one thing and you're looking at what they're doing and you're trying to compare, but God has a bigger plan for your life. And you end up missing it because you're looking at a little business and you should have had a big one. Yeah. Amen. 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 Mm. Erroneous beliefs. Beliefs that you picked up before you received the truth. I love that. Knowing the truth, the Bible says, will set you free. But if it's false, watch this. Watch this. Establish belief. When you look at that, if you believe something before you found the truth, that's Christians. That's me. That's some of you that are sitting here. Because we were raised up in the church. We were raised up in the school. And people really didn't know the truth. Even some of our parents taught us things that we believe that are incorrect. You know, what's that holiday? It's one of them holidays that uh, mom and them used to make peas and stuff. What? No, you don't believe that's true. <laughs> that's erroneous beliefs. And some of y'all still cooking the peas. <laughs> You still cooking the things. Amen. Certain things. So you got a erroneous belief can be something as simple as you were taught and believed that there are some places that you ought not be in. There's some things that you shouldn't have. You should not be living on the top of a skyscraper. You should not be a preacher or an evangelist. Or a missionary in the church. Because you were taught that it costs too much. You got to give up too much if you're a deacon in the church. If you become a real, dedicated, committed Christian for God, you were taught that you can't have no fun. That you can't enjoy life. That's one of the biggest lies. We live better now than we ever lived before because we have a relationship with God. So we have to watch the uh, established beliefs that came up through, through a lot of tradition. Amen. Mark 7 and 13 says this about tradition. Thus, you nullify the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down. And you do many things like that. Our parents handed down stuff and we got to watch what we're telling our children. Amen. Because they will become stuck in a small place. When they find out the truth, wait till your children find out the truth and find out they can be whoever God says they can be. And that's the truth. Amen. So let's be cognizant of that. Amen. I forgot where I was. Uh, but here's one the, uh, uh, that we need to really get rid of is this thing that I just call enormous blessings. Enormous blessings. That's one thing that the devil can get in your heart and in your mind that will cause you not to be able to grow, not to be in the will of God, to be blessed like with $1.7 billion. Okay? When you got all of this stuff and you rolling, and some of you all are doing pretty good, amen, 
Some of you all are doing extraordinary good. That's what I love about this church, that we don't have to have pity parties in here. Everybody's not on the same level, and we can accept that, but people are growing. This is not a church where everybody just came out the club and came off the street. Everybody, most of y'all, there might be one homeless person in here. I'm looking around. <laughs> Amen. I'm looking around. Sister Richardson, I'm going to find you a house. Don't worry about it, baby. <laughs> but seriously, uh, when people get blessed, when keep people just walk into enormous blessings, there is a tendency for them to forget about God. They asked God for the blessing. God gave them the blessing, but he was larger than what they expected, and they have a tendency to forget about God. I watch it every Sunday. I've been watching this stuff and doing this thing for about 37 years. I watch this stuff. People just, you know, well, what you doing in my business? I'm supposed to be in your business. That's what I'm here for. Amen. You may not like it, but that's what I'm here for. He does say and rebuke. Yep. Right? right? When you get abundantly blessed and you leave to go on a sabbatical from the church for five or six weeks, you even forgot about God. Yeah. I never panic. You not once see me panic. You know, where's Paul at? Where's Gloria at? I ain't seen him in seven weeks. I don't worry about that crazy stuff. Get time to worry about you doing that. If you want to go on the business person's list, I know this. If he went to get Jonas, if he can get Jonah, he can get you. So I ain't going to just sit here and have two people worried about who misses. <laughs> Don't let the magnitude of your blessings distance you from God. Because that little thing that you got, that he, yeah, I see a look. That little thing that you get, that look, you, you want to preach too? Okay, come on. <laughs> come with me. That little thing that God blesses with, He's checking you out and testing you because He got something bigger for you. And you can't get hung up on the little blessing while God still has the big stuff waiting to see what you're going to do with the little stuff. Come on. And then next to the last, where the last one is, elementary blunders. So many of us. Let me just read this scripture to you real quickly. Luke 15 and 13. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance in, right, in righteous living. And when he had spent all there, he arose a mighty famine. There arose a mighty famine in that land and he began to be in war. Elementary blunders. Young people do foolish things. Elementary people, immature people, make mistakes in life. All I think most is safe to say all of us had at one point in time done some foolish things when we were young. Don't hold on to those things or the memory of making mistakes in your younger elementary years. We all made a mistake. Count it up. I made a mistake. I won't do that again. As you mature, don't let the sins of the past hold down your, your uh, expectations for the future. God knew that you were a sinner before you even created the act. He knew you were going to mess up and you messed up. Amen. What you got to learn how to do is just let that thing go. Yeah. And say, from this point on, I'm moving forward. I'm not thinking about what I did in the past. If I want to be in the will of God, I can't drag all of the dirt from my past into the will of God for my future. Yeah. Amen. Y'all give God a praise right there. I'm telling you. I'm not going to drag that stuff into my future. When you look in scripture and you look in the Bible, you can see almost most of the people that became prominent, that we follow today, that are that kind of uh, their names rise up from the scripture. They did made some mistakes in their life and they made them in their younger years. Abraham blundered by lying because he, he was a liar. 
David made blunders with Bathsheba because he was a player. Jonah made a blunder because he didn't follow through on the assignment that God gave him. He ran instead. And then you know the one about uh, Peter because he denied Christ. All of us have made a mistake. So it's not what we did in the past. It's what you're going to do in your future. Amen? And you do know you have a future, right? Amen. And your future should be bright. So the will to live better. If you go down the list, you're going to see several people in the Bible that uh, had that will to do better with God. The will to really do better for God. Moses had a will to live better. And look where he ended up. A leader of millions of people. Abraham had a will to live better and obeyed the Lord and became the father of many nations. The will of God, walking in the will of God, will show up visibly in your life. When you are in the will of God, most of the time, God will bring you to the forefront. Your name will be great. Remember that in the Bible? Your name will be great. He will expand who you are when you're in the will of God of God. David was a shepherd, musician, poet, warrior, military commander, and all of that. But once he made up his mind, he wanted to be in the will of God. The will of God came to pass. He started acting like a king. Sometimes you act like what you're not until time catches up with you. You have to start acting like a queen while you're here. What gets on my nerve is sometimes I look at a Facebook or Instagram, I look at social media, and now they have this new term that was been out for about a year or two, and that everybody's a queen. And it's good to pronounce what you are before you become. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you're going to pl have plans to become what you say, queen, then you should start practicing. Yeah, you can't be a queen that acts like a whore. Or somebody that's scared. That's, that's not a queen. That's like that. That sometime in your life, you got to shift. You got to change from who you were to who you are to, to, uh, to become. Amen. And people should ought to be able to see the change in your life. If you're talking different but not acting different, Lord help us. Amen. So if you want to act like a king, be a king. Rise up. Do what kings do. Kings serve people. People don't serve kings. Kings serve people. People don't serve kings. Amen. Oh, I see your hands going up. Amen to that. Amen. So I want to just let you all know. Because we're going to a part two. Those are the things that can hold you back from having a better life. The will. Do you have the will to become better? I know God has a will for your life. But the question is, do you want to walk in that will? Do you want to stir up something within yourself? Do you want to get to people that can be mentors in your life? Do you want to stop begging people and begging life? What you can give me and give back to life yes. so that other people can do well and do better in their life. Yes. Do you have the will to do better for your life? It is the will of God that all of you maximize your life, take advantage of every opportunity that the Lord presents. Amen? Yes. That he presents to you so that you can live better. Now, who in this building this morning has a desire to live better than you are today? Amen. To live better than you are today. And I just looked around. Some of you all have been a great life. Great life. But I'm so glad you know that there's more room at the top. So no matter what level we're at today, somebody said there's more room going up than there is going down. And I'm not going down because the call of my life is to go up. And it's to go up higher and live in an abundant life in the will of God. Come on, let's give God a praise right there. Amen. Amen. We're going to live better. We're going to live better. We're going to get in this word of God. We're going to learn this word of God. We're going to act like we're in the word of God. We're going to live it out. Look at your neighbor and tell them, I'm going to live it out. Everything that the word of God says is going to come to pass in my life. Every promise that God made me is going to come to pass in my life because of the Word of God. His Word will not come back for it. Every hand of God that is laid upon my life will bless my life. Going in and coming out. God bless you all this morning. Hallelujah. If we have
have great opportunities. Next Sunday we'll do part two to not only tell you what you've got to get rid of, but what to do to have better come into your life. Yeah. I'm telling you that God has a way and God has a plan for you to wake up every morning in peace, every morning with joy. When he made Adam and he made Eve, what was the first job he gave them? You go into the garden every morning, and all you have to do is take care of the plants and the animals. You don't have to have any drama. Look at somebody tell them, drama free. Now you're talking about me. Drama free. That's what God wants. For you to wake up in the morning, no drama for the rest of the day. You may have to work, but I'm going to not have to work like a man that's in need or a woman that's in need. Hallelujah. Drama free. Peace of mind. Somebody touch your head to your head. Yeah. Expect peace of mind. God's promises are going to come to pass in your life. You sit here in church. You hear the name Jesus. You hear the name Jehovah. And you can't get excited when the name of Jesus is pronounced. And that's because of a spirit. We lift that spirit off of you today. So every time you hear the name of Jesus, something should resonate in your spirit. There should be joy, unspeakable joy, that rises up in you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. The doors of the church is open. Can there be somebody here this morning who wants to unite with our ministry?